Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to talk about some of the special features in engine room number three. On Iowa class battleships, engine room number three is main control. Uh, although, compared to some of the modern ships you guys served on, uh, main control can exert precious little control over the plant. So the two main differences between engine room number three and the other three engine rooms are engine room number three has its own evaporator, which is this thing here, and it's got the main control status board where the engineering officer of the watch can sit and watch what's going on with all of the boilers and turbines throughout the ship. So, some of the remedial stuff. Battleship New Jersey has four propellers, and therefore she has four engine rooms. And each engine room is fed from its own fire room, so there's four of those as well. So, those eight engineering main spaces uh, comprise the main propulsion equipment and the main power generating equipment for the entire vessel. There's auxiliary equipment too, but uh, we're just going to focus on the main stuff right now. In the forward auxiliary machinery space, or forward diesel, we have two evaporators. This is one of the evaporators for Battleship New Jersey. The evaporators are run by the A gang, who run all of the auxiliary machinery, which includes the diesel generators, uh, refrigerators, air conditioners, uh, and the evaporators. Uh, even though it's auxiliary machinery, this is in no way a backup or a secondary piece of machinery to our propulsive equipment. Uh, Iowa class battleships run off of steam turbines, which means that they use uh, superheated steam that's heated in boilers. Those boilers need boiler feed water. Boiler feed water, you can't just take salt water out of the ocean and put it in there because you'll have too much residue left in the boiler. So the evaporators are uh, evaporating salt water. They're heating it up, uh, turning it into steam so that the salt stays here and you get a super pure fresh water with as few impurities as possible. Uh, and that becomes your boiler feed water. Now, in theory, our boilers are a closed system in that the water goes into the boiler, it's heated, it goes through the turbines, it comes back uh, into the condensers, and then it goes back into the boilers, and it keeps doing this continuous cycle. Uh, in practice, there are different things that are done which cause us to lose steam. When you blow the steam whistle, you're shooting uh, steam out, and it's vibrating a diaphragm on its way, it's making a noise, but you cannot recollect that steam like you are in the boilers. Likewise, when you blow your stacks and you're cleaning out the inside of your boilers uh, and funnels, you're blowing steam over it, and so you're losing some of your boiler feed water. The boilers have to have much more pure water than the drinking water, so that there's no particulate left over when it boils that water into steam. Uh, as it is, there's no way to make it fully pure, and there is stuff left over. Uh, so the ship has an almost perfect closed system where the boiler feed water continues to be heated into steam and used and then returned to water and then heated into steam and so on and so forth in a perfect cycle. Well, an awful thing happened to us down there. We, the evaporators broke down and the sewage water from the Orinoco River got in, into the drinking fountains and everybody comes down with dysentery. Now, what were the evaporators? What's an evaporator? The evaporators? Yes. What is well, they, evaporator? they, uh, the evaporators take the salt water and purify it and then they use it for the uh, engines, of course, the boilers and so forth, because they have to have fresh water. And then uh, it's fed throughout the ship for bathing and drinking. So, some of the various holding tanks around the ship are already loaded with makeup feed water to be introduced to the system as we lose some. But, you know, maybe we take a torpedo hit and we lose a lot of our makeup feed water spaces. Uh, how do we make more reserve feed water? Well, that's where the evaporators come in. And battleships are nothing if not redundant. So, in addition to the two evaporators in the forward diesel, uh, the forward emergency diesel compartment, we also have one here in engine room number three. Maybe it's in here because this is uh, the main control space, 
maybe it's in here just to get it further aft from uh, the forward engine room. Engine room number four and uh, aft auxiliary diesel both have a number of propeller shafts cutting through the space that might limit how much room there is for something like this. I'm not entirely sure why the choice was made to put this here. Uh, there, there are two propeller shafts that cut through this space on the outboard sides, but uh, may maybe that leaves enough room for a piece like this. And this evaporator is a little bit smaller and, and uh, has less capacity than the ones up forward. Besides the evaporators, this is where the engineering officer sits. So let's go look at that. Each of the engine rooms has a throttle board like this. And uh, each throttle board has an ahead and an astern throttle, and it's got a number of pressure and temperature gauges all over it. An engine revolution indicator, an engine order telegraph. You know, th these things are pretty standard throughout the ship. However, this throttle board is bigger than any of the other ones because it has not only its own pressure and temperature stuff, but also all the pressure and temperature gauges from the other engine rooms are duplicated in here so that the engineering officer who would stand behind this desk here can see what's going on in the other engineering spaces. Are they answering the engine order telegraphs? Uh, are they doing what they're supposed to be doing in a timely manner? And if not, it's got a soundproof phone booth back here that you can use to call them and yell at them. Uh, if you go on a modern or a more modern ship, uh, for example, I've gotten to strip parts out of uh, main control on the aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy, uh, that looks more like a Star Trek ship. I thought I was on the bridge deep inside the hull of the ship. The engineering officer is at a table and he's got all sorts of consoles and things in front of him and there's actually stuff to control things from there. Uh, here, we can't do anything in engine room one, two, or four. We can just see via the gauges what they're doing. So you, you don't actually have control here. The Baker Division, which is a B Division, A, B Division, that was engineering, main propulsion engineering which was below decks, just the reverse of where I had been. So this was um, boiler division, and I had some very good, talented, and qualified uh, enlisted people there and warrant officers, and that was my initial assignment, and we got along very well. The engineering officer is in charge of the whole power plant, but during general quarters, all the watertight doors are closed, so he can't necessarily roam uh, one third of the length of the ship going from engine room to engine room checking everything out. So from here he can at least keep some semblance of control by watching everything and then calling the enlisted guys in those other spaces. I suspect engine room number three was chosen as main control because engine rooms one and two with the outboard shafts have the throttle board basically pressed up against the outside of the hull. There's, there's no extra room there. Uh, so it had to be three or four. And uh, three is closer to the middle of the ship. So if the engineering officer does have to rove around for whatever reason, he, he starts from a fairly central location. This well, rudder angle or clock doesn't work anymore. It's probably, I don't know if he has the key. Oh, wow, well, they took this out. The shaft. Uh, Shaft, um, tell you how many on your watch. We used to have a, um, there's a chair right here. And then we used to have a table right here. And um, we did with the table, the top watch, you would have a watch. Um, he would be called machinist made of the watch. We call him top watch. And then you had your throttle man. This is your forward throttle. Forward throttle, this is your aft throttle. Your uh, shaft. RPM, tell how many RPMs. And what would happen is, someone's playing with it. This is how many revolutions, like um, if we were doing uh, scene anger detail, they would give us, uh, I forgot what the number was. But then here it's the bell, like if uh, we would get a third, two thirds, standard full flank, we would have on the chart, we would know um, the RPM 
that would be required for us to uh, answer the bell. Is your main this is temperature, pressure, this is vacuum because you need a vacuum uh, you need a vacuum to get the steam going into the high pressure turbine you know because if you didn't have vacuum you wouldn't be able to move steam. Here's all your oil pressures. This is auxiliary steam because auxiliary steam is very important here. Ox exhaust. Oh my goodness. Condenser discharge. You can see all everything that's going in there. One interesting thing here is that uh, on the bridge, there are two engine order telegraphs. One for the port side, one for the starboard side. Each engine room has only one telegraph so that uh, they're only seeing what they themselves are being told to do, whether they're on the port side or the starboard side. Engine room number two is the exception to that. We've got two engine order telegraphs, so there's we can see what the captain is ordering from the bridge or the officer of the deck uh, with both the port and starboard side. Why would they possibly go in different directions? Uh, Iowa-class battleships are pretty long and narrow, uh, so steering them can be difficult. Um, to help a little bit with that, you can have one side's propellers reverse while the other goes forward, and that'll give you a little bit tighter turning radius. There's still only one engine revolution indicator, because likely if they're doing something fiddly like that, uh, they're not going to be having different things do different stuff. So they're, they're calling for specifically 200 revolutions or 180 revolutions or whatever, whatever the case may be from the propellers, uh, and, and it would always be from all four. Or, you know, sometimes engines are shut down for maintenance, so it's pretty common for these ships to run off of three shafts. So for all three that are currently operational. What else do we have here? The engineering officer has a rudder position indicator, so he can see what the helm is doing, and he's got shaft RPM indicators up here to show, yes, these are starting to match what's being called for on the engine order telegraph. So back here behind the desk, uh, the engineering officer of the watch does not have any sort of fancy Captain Kirk-esque swivel chair. Uh, he's just standing back here. There is room in here for different reports and tech manuals and whatnot. Uh, he does have access to a tremendous number of telephones. So we got a sound powered phone down here. We got a ship service telephone here. Uh, another sound powered phone here, all sorts of amplifiers and stuff. And that's not even getting into the soundproof phone booth here where we've got a 1MC box and uh, other sound powered and ship service telephones. So from here, the engineering officer and his staff can communicate with a couple different people on a couple different circuits simultaneously. The rest of the space has the same sort of uh, switchboards, turbo generators, and uh, turbine units as all the other engine rooms. So if you want to see those, check out some of our other videos, or come out in person and take one of our engine room tours. Check our website for availability. Which engine room did you work in? Did your main control space look anything like this? Could you imagine a space like this still in use on an Iowa-class battleship in 91 or 92? Seems pretty antiquated, right? Tell us your stories about these sorts of spaces in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of businesses and private individuals like yourselves. In particular, the support you guys have given us over the last year and a half has allowed us to go from making one video a week to making multiple videos a week. That allows us to make the YouTube channel a larger part of our jobs. Thank you for that. There's a link in the description if you would like to continue to support us in that way. Or you could help us out by liking, sharing, and subscribing so other people can find the channel too. Also, it'll notify you uh, every time we put up a new video. Thanks for watching.